My goodness, it seems that living on this world is getting more and more challenging as each year passes. I continually find myself saying, even now, before Jesus comes, I can't imagine things getting any darker than they do. The prophet Michael lived during a stressful time politically and nationally. He shared a message from the Lord that we will do well to listen to. He tells us that God has a plan to redeem his people. That us, no matter how difficult life becomes, our God can and will redeem it. He wants us to take his message and his teaching to others. But it requires that we sit at his feet. As we sit, we hear his heart. Learn his word and experience his love. Today, seek the Lord on the mountaintop. He loves you and he's waiting there for you. Who wants to help take up the offering? Have any takers? Have this to refer back. I didn't uh, didn't lose it. All right, uh, we're glad to have everyone here this evening. And uh, as far as announcements, I'd like to kind of get your feelings. I'd like for us to go next uh, next Wednesday night to uh, First Baptist Church in Rimlap. They're going to have a singing that night, and uh, it'll be at six thirty. And so I think it'd be a good thing if we just all load up and go over there to sing. Uh, it's supposed to be a choir. Let me get my flyer here. We got this in the mail. And it sounds pretty good. Alabama Singing Men. And it says performing First Baptist Church Rim Lap April 7th at 6.30 p.m. And so... Uh, That'd be next Wednesday night. Let's just plan to do that. You guys don't even have to drive all the way over here. That's right. Right down the road. Right down the, right down the road. Right. Yeah. So we'll do that next Wednesday night. Is it 6.30? 6.30 next Wednesday night at Rimlight Baptist Church. And I'm sure I'll take my van. So anybody around here, that you know, I, I can carry six adults, actually seven, so anybody wants to ride with me, just let me know, and we'll we'll head out and go over there. Uh, all right. Um, like to mention my picture that Randy uh, drew me from last Sunday. Appreciate that. And as far as announcements go, I guess I can't think of any. We got the new lights put up this week, and so when they come on, we're going to see for the first time what they look like. Saturday, don't forget Saturday. Easter egg hunt. Saturday, Saturday Easter egg hunt, right? Three o'clock. If it's pouring down rain, we'll just have to call it off. But it's down at the, uh, the Nectar Ballpark down here. And so that's another big thing. And our early service, our service is Sunday. Sunday morning, we'll be uh, meeting at 8 o'clock for our early service. And then we'll have breakfast. So you men be ready to come and cook. And uh, we'll. We'll go and I guess me and Gary will go buy some groceries. We two are going to help y'all Sunday morning as 
Sure, we'll find something. I got a list. Okay. Well, yeah. Bacon is taken care of, but Joe has asked me to cook it. Okay. All right. So yeah, that'd be fine. I've got a list, and a lot of the things are already covered. I know Brother Kozad's already gotten the pancakes, uh, and a couple of other people have spoken up for some things. At this time, then, we'll have our our prayer request. I know there's one that I wanted to mention that had been on here. Uh, Dale Smith from First Baptist Church of, uh, of Hayden, we've been praying for for a couple of weeks now, and uh, he passed away. So I'd like to remember that family, <coughs> Dale Smith family. Uh, and uh, I'd also like to continue to ask you to remember our personnel committee with the association. I've ended up working with that. And uh, we just uh, appreciate any prayers that you lift up. It's a big job. Uh, Brother Ernie's had a lot of responsibility and now with him leaving, uh, it's a lot uh, to consider and to fill his shoes. And so remember our personnel committee if you would. All right. Instead of reading over these names, if you would, just call out the ones that you know of, if anyone has any. Uh, Susie? Uh, Pam Williams' family. She passed away unexpectedly uh, Sunday morning. Sister Flanagan? Sharon Morgan. This is my daughter-in-law's sister, and she is in, has cancer, probably in coma stage now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sherry Morgan. Silas. Where's my mom? Dina K. It's because she has you and Shane, right? <laughs> Pray for all of our families, right? It's good to have this good group tonight. Uh, I know we're excited about the baptism that we're having tonight, and uh, I know I'm excited about it. And I just appreciate everybody being out. I guess this is probably the, the biggest group we've had since uh, on Wednesday night since we've been coming back. So it's a blessing to see all of you. Here, I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's very encouraging to have you here, and I appreciate you coming tonight. All right, if there's no others, any other names you'd like to call out? I know everybody's been remembering Brad and David, but Brad has had a virus. She's been pretty sick. She's finally starting to feel a little better, but you need to remember her. smile when I think about them. Okay, I've got one it's going to be fun. I talked to Lindsay today, and they've been passing the stomach virus down over at their house, too. She actually got it. She had to go to the ER. I'm going to, my goodness, she's had a hard time. Yeah. I'm going to just pray for Chris. Anything that happens to her, when you got four kids, a lot of stuff can happen. I'm just going to put Chris Yarbrough, and that means his whole family, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, if that's all, then let's all stand. And anyone that would like to come to the altar, come ahead. It's a good time.
Father and our God, thank you so much for this day. Lord, it's a beautiful day. I know it's rained a lot. But Father, we're just so grateful to be here and grateful to be in your house. We're grateful, Lord, that you brought us all together tonight. And, and uh, that we're all able to come here and share and enjoy and, uh, and join in with the fellowship that we have. Lord, I lift up every single family, Lord, that's represented here tonight. I ask you, Father, to draw us close together. We're grateful for the love that we share because of your Holy Spirit. And we're grateful, Lord, for the time that we get to be together, especially in our church services like this. Father, I pray that you would uh, build up our families, Lord, and strengthen our families and uh, call us out, Lord, to do what you'd have us to do. Lord, I lift up the names that we have on our uh, prayer list tonight. I know, Lord, there's a lot of people in the Dina mentioned one being so sick and possibly terminal. We just pray for for this one. Father, we pray for all of the uh, ones, Lord, that are on our prayer list for the read. We pray, Father, for little uh, Corey Hatcher. We just lift him up. We know that uh, he's a special, uh, special little fella in our congregation. We pray, Father, that you'd be with all of these that are on the prayer list in a very special and real way. Lord, we want to lift up our classes tonight as we go to our classes. Father, we lift up our services that are coming up. We know, Lord, that we have the Easter egg hunt, Lord, that's coming up this Saturday. And we have the special services for Easter. And we have music. And we just ask you, Father, to be with us, Lord, as we come together to share in the Easter, uh, in the Easter service and the special things that we have. We love you very, very much. And we uh, thank you so much for dying on the cross for our sin. Lord, it's just a blessing that when we stop and think of the sacrifice that you've made on our behalf in order that we might have salvation. And Lord, we're so grateful for this. Uh, we love you for it. And we want to serve you forever and ever and ever. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Watch them grow up, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. All right, take your Bible and turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. My intention was to have a short devotion tonight. We'll see how short it turns out being, right? <laughs> I usually have two front and back, and today I only have front, so. At least, at least I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to uh, make an effort at being short, right? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 12.
There's a lot of information here in this chapter for us. Uh, it speaks about the husbands and the wives and the family and the way that we should uh, conduct ourselves. And this section that I'll be reading is uh, talking about righteousness. And so uh, we'll begin in verse 8, chapter 3. The Bible says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrariwise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And let his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open under their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. We'll stop right there. I want to point that out there in verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. We're called righteous. We're called the righteous. Uh, verses 8 through 11 actually describes the way that we are to strive to be. Verses 8 through 11. Notice there in verse 8. It says, be of one mind. Don't divide into different factions and different groups and different sects of of uh, people. We're just all basically the same attitude. We're just a bunch of sinners saved by grace. Right? And let's keep it at that because that's what we are. Not one of us is better than the other. And so we don't divide ourselves up. When you stop and think about it, uh, we say one nation under God, what? Indivisible. Indivisible. We get that from the Bible. And this this uh, scripture right here that we're reading uh, explains this. It's where this comes from. Be of one mind. Don't divide into different groups. Stay the same. This is being righteous when we, when we don't divide. It says there also in verse 8, have compassion toward one another. Verse 8. Having compassion one of another. So, have compassion one uh, towards one another. This is being righteous also. So that's two things there that we've learned, that we've spoken about, that uh, it means to be righteous. Don't be divisive. Don't split off into groups. You know. Uh, and have compassion toward one another. It also says love as brethren. You know, around here at the church, that's what we say, isn't it? Hey, brother. We say it all the time. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. Hey, sister. Well, see, we get that from the scripture, and it's right here in verse 8. Uh, love as brethren. And when you stop and think about the family and how close family ties are, and it's everywhere. I know it's really special with Malia and her sisters. Uh, you can just tell when they're around each other how much they love each other and, uh, and how close they are because they're sisters. They grew up together. They have all that family tie. And that's the way it is to be with us. And so loving others as brethren, this is being righteous. Be pitiful, it says there in verse 8. Uh, this means to exercise pity. Be, uh, have pity on those that need to have the pity taken on them. This is also being righteous. Uh, be courteous. What does it say there in verse 8? Be courteous. Love his brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Be uh, exercising courtesy. That's being righteous. And so we've learned all these things about Righteousness, be of one mind, have compassion toward one another, love as brethren, 
be pitiful, exercise pity, exercise courtesy. All these things the Bible speaks of is that if when we're righteous, then that's the way we're to be. Verse 9 tells us also, it says, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. Uh, so not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, that means don't retaliate when somebody does you wrong. It means don't get even. Don't take revenge when somebody does you wrong. Don't render evil for evil. This is being righteous. This is the way God uh, is instructing us to be in his word. All right, it also says there in verse 9, but on the contrary, or contrary wise, blessing. Knowing that we're, uh, you're there unto call that you should inherit a blessing. So instead of retaliating and getting even and taking revenge, we're actually supposed to bless those people. This is being righteous. This is what the Bible speaks about, about being righteous. Verse 10 says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. So refraining our tongue from evil and speaking no guile, don't talk about people behind their backs. That's what this is talking about. Don't say anything about somebody that you wouldn't just say to their face. Be sure that we're that we're careful about the things that we say. Always be careful about the things when we speak. It's very important. Uh, and this is also considered being righteous. Verse 11. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Eschew evil and do good and ensue it. Uh, I had to look those words up because I don't use those words very often. I don't know that I've ever used the word askew. But askew means to, to keep away from. It means to avoid. It means to shun. And ensue means to come after. It means to follow. And so when it says askew evil, do good and seek peace, it means to keep away from and avoid and shun evil. Stay away from evil. It means to come after peace. It means to follow peace. And so this also means being righteous. And it says there in verse 12, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And so it just begs the question, do you want the eyes of the Lord to watch over you? And yes, we do. And so we learn these things about being righteous. We learn these things about righteousness in order to receive those blessings from the Lord and His divine protection. And uh, so it's very important Verse 12, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. So we are called to be righteous. And we want the Lord to watch over us. And we want him to hear our prayers. Amen? Yes, that's what we want. And so these things that we read, when we read about be of one mind, don't divide up into different factions. Have compassion toward one another. Love other people like you love your brothers and love your sisters. Exercise pity. Exercise courtesy. Don't render evil for evil or railing for railing. Don't retaliate. Don't get even with people when they do you wrong. Uh, don't take revenge on people. Don't hold grudges and be bitter towards them. Uh, Instead of doing those things, actually bless those people. Because we never know when the way that we act, that that one day might speak to that person's heart and perhaps they might come <clears throat> to know Christ. Uh, keep away from evil, avoid it, shun evil, and follow peace. It says come after peace. All this means being righteous. All this means being the way that God wants us to be. Is it easy to do? No, nope. not easy to do. It's not human nature to do that way. When somebody hits us, the first thing we want to do is turn around and hit them right back. Yeah. Full-fledged swing. But this is the way the Bible teaches us. And it says the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open unto our prayers. So we want to be righteous. And it says there in verse 12, but 
The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And so there's not really a middle ground, is there? He's either for us or he's against us. Uh, we face challenges. And we face challenges with these very things as Christians. We face challenges about being righteous, don't we? It's sometimes it's a hard thing to remember to be the way that the Bible instructs us to be. What is our challenge and where do the challenges come from? The challenge to righteous people are unrighteous people. It's dealing with other people where we find our challenge. If you'll turn in your Bible to Hosea chapter 4 and Hosea is what? Right after Ezekiel, is it? Uh, that would be right there after Daniel. You got Daniel in there. Yeah. Hosea chapter 4. We read what we're up against. As Christians. As people striving to be righteous. And we know that our challenge comes from unrighteous people. Because when unrighteous people treat us unrighteously, it is our tendency to treat them unrighteous right back. <laughs> right? And so, these are the challenges that we face. This is where we exercise righteousness. So we have Hosea chapter 4. I'd like to read... Uh, verses 1 through, uh, I guess it's 1 and 2, yeah. Yeah. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there's no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Boy, does that sound familiar. By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood touches blood. And then it says down there in verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of, lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And so we have there in verse 1 For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. We're up against a land where there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God. That's the land that we live in. The United States has found itself exactly like God is describing Israel here in Hosea chapter 4. And when you study Hosea and you learn when he prophesied, he was prophesying to the northern kingdom just before they fell. Just before God put an end to that government in the northern kingdom of Israel. And so he was up to here with people acting unrighteous. And what do we read over here in 1 Peter that we read? But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And so when we read over here in Hosea and we find out his description of what that is, and then we learn that he brought that judgment to that country because of the evil that they had done, we are up against a land where there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God. Verse 1. We are up against a land where there is swearing. What is that? Filthy language. Filthy language all over the TV, isn't it? Lying. Reckon there's any lying goes on in Washington, D.C.? 
You have to laugh, keep from crying, don't you? And killing and stealing and committing adultery. Reckon any of that goes on in our country? Folks, it's all over the place. I get so tired, and Lee and I both do, get so tired of hearing commercials about lawyers. It's just one after the other. This law firm, that law firm, this law firm, we just want to turn them all off because that's what all this stuff is there, it's talking about, is all these problems that we're seeing here. We're up against the land where they break out, it says. What does it say there? In uh, verse 2, they break out and blood toucheth blood. What does that mean? Break out, uh, that is where there is no restraint on anything. We see that, don't we? With all of the uh, sin that's there, all the different lifestyles that we see that are so contrary to to biblical teaching and biblical doctrine. That's what it's talking about. They break out. There's just no restraint. Anything anyone can imagine to do, this is what's done. They break out. Of course, God is not uh, pleased with it. And where it says right there, blood toucheth blood. Uh, before you can get one person buried, another person is murdered and needs buried. You can't get one mess cleaned up before there's another mess that needs to be cleaned up. Blood toucheth blood. And there in verse 6 where I read there, it says, My people are destroyed for a lack of, lack of knowledge of God. A, a lack of knowledge. What is the knowledge of God? It's exactly what we spoke about with righteousness. It's exactly what we spoke about over here in 1 Peter chapter 3. Now in 1 Peter, if you want to turn back over there, 1 Peter chapter 3. In verse 20, Peter talks about Noah. And he talks about that Noah faced the same situation in his day that we Christians today face. Now, we're over here trying to live a righteous life. We're trying to you know, be forgiven and loving everybody like a brother and all these good things that, that God wants us to do, being kind and uh, practicing being courte courteous and exercising pity and uh, loving people like a brother. We're trying to do these things and The Bible says that Noah faced the same things that we Christians face uh, when he was building the ark. He talks about there in verse 20 that only eight people survived when the face of the Lord came against them that did evil. We read that up there in chapter 3, verse 12. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And what happened in Noah's day when the face of the Lord came against those that did evil? He brought the flood and only eight people were saved. You know, Noah and his wife. And he had Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives, right? And so that adds up to eight people. So there in verse 21, I wanted to read to you. And it's talking about Noah. While the ark was preparing, when few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. He says there in verse 21, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. And then it goes on to say, Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. And then it says, By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so much is in that verse right there. Your baptism is only an outward expression of your inward knowledge of God. See, we've learned that to be obedient to God and that to be obedient to these things that he considers to be righteous, being of one mind. That means 
we all have the same focus. Our focus is we want to serve Jesus. Right? We want to love Jesus. We want, we want to uh, be pleasing to him. Uh, we want to be compassionate toward one another. We want to be, uh, exercise pity and exercise courtesy and all these things that we talked about. This is being righteous. And our uh, baptism is an outward expression of that knowledge of God that we have. And so that holds within it repentance and all those things that we understand when we become Christians. Uh, <clears throat> and Jesus said in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 10, verse 3, he said, Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. And so as we think about what our duty is, which is to be righteous, and how hard it is to be righteous in the world in which we live. And then we get to the part in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, I believe it is, where we have the uh, Great Commission. Jesus is sending us forth out into that world that is unrighteous like a lamb before wolves in order to try to reach people for him. And so it is a very important job. It is a very big job. It is a much needed job for us to reach out and reach other people through the way that we treat them and the way that we react to them when they treat us ways that they shouldn't be treating us. Jesus said, came and spake unto them, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So he is sending us out into that very difficult situation, expecting us to be successful with our conduct as we reach other people. Amen. All right, so come ahead if you would, our two that are going to be baptized. Anybody else want to be baptized? We got John and John, right? Brother Kozad said, Big John, Little John. Okay, yeah. hey, if you'll guide our thing over here, hang it. Y'all just head up there and I'll go on this side. Y'all can just edit that out. <laughs> I mean, how close do you guys want me to get?
John Allen Kozad spoke with him while ago in the back. He understands about Jesus. He understands that Jesus saved us from our sin. He understands that Jesus is the Son of God. He understands that he gave his heart to Jesus. Amen. You have anything you want to say? You don't have to. You'll do as he's ready to be baptized. All right. I'll walk you through this. All right. John Allen Kozad. Upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ and obedience to his commands, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Take your hand. Thank you. 